It's Friday, October 31st, 2014. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and this is episode number 56 of TEN, Transport Evolved News for the week beginning October the 27th, 2014. If I seem a little less energetic than usual this week and the show isn't up to its usual spec, that's because I've been in hospital this week for some minor surgery and there's still a little post-surgical pain going on. And while it's cool to say I have a little scar and an implanted cyborg device on Halloween, it's leaving me a little groggy. So yeah, on with the show. At the end of last week, following hot on the heels of the news that German automaker Daimler has decided to sell its remaining Tesla stock, news reached us that Toyota, another reasonably early investor in Tesla, was also selling off at least some of its Tesla stock. As detailed right at the end of last week, the sale, the actual percentage and price of which we don't know, seems to be nothing more than a bearish reaction on the part of Toyota to Tesla's severely overweight stock, which Toyota, like Daimler, acquired long before Tesla was a force to be reckoned with in the automotive world. What isn't clear at the moment is if Toyota sold all of its stock or just a small percentage, but given Daimler made a massive $780 million from selling around what's believed to be about twice the shareholding Toyota purchased back in 2010, Toyota is likely to make more money than I've ever seen before. As for collaboration with Tesla, Toyota's previous project with Tesla, the Toyota RAV4 EV, ended earlier this year, but Tesla seems happy about working with Toyota in the future, so there's no love lost here even if Toyota to stake in Tesla isn't what it once was. As Tesla Motors CEO Elon Musk is only too happy to admit, Tesla Motors would generally prefer you to lease rather than buy a Tesla electric car. As well as being cheaper than a finance package, leasing allows Tesla to ensure that your car has a guaranteed life after the lease has ended as an official certified used Tesla. Now the cost of that lease has dropped thanks to a brand new lease package for the Tesla customers in the US. Working alongside US Bank, Tesla says some customers could find their lease payments will be as much as 25% less than they were previously. In addition, Tesla has launched something called its Happiness Guarantee, a scheme which allows Tesla leasees to return their new car in the first three months of ownership and walk away from Tesla with no strings attached, except one which says you can't take out another Tesla lease for a few months after invoking this particular scheme. Moreover, Tesla says it will now let leasees upgrade to the latest car before their lease period is up, in exchange for an appropriate adjustment fee to make up for any difference in sticker price. Range Rover, Jaguar Land Rover's luxury SUV range, is traditionally associated with high-paid sports stars, A-list celebrities and go-anywhere opulence. In almost every case, those associations and preconceptions come with a large, powerful, gas-guzzling V6 or V8. But now it appears that Jaguar Land Rover might be about to change Range Rover's gas-guzzling reputation with the rumour that it's considering putting the possibility of producing an all-electric Range Rover model to cross shop against Tesla's Model S and Model X in the luxury car marketplace. That's according to Autocar, who claims that Jaguar Land Rover Group Engineering Director Wolfgang Siebart hinted recently that the British-based firm was seriously considering a plug-in vehicle for the Chinese and US markets. In the past few years, we have seen Jaguar Land Rover at least flirt with plug-in vehicles, first with a plug-in hybrid Range Rover prototype, and then more recently with a fully electric go-anywhere Land Rover Defender. So the question seems when, rather than if, an all-electric Land Rover or Range Rover will make it to market. In just a few months' time, General Motors will officially unveil the next-generation 2016 Chevrolet Volt. Following on from the success of the first-generation Chevy Volt, the new Volt is expected to be marketed at a more mainstream audience and bring more people than ever before to the world of range-extended electric cars. And while we don't know what the Volt will look quite like yet, we do now know what will power the Volt, courtesy of a tech briefing from GM this week. Under the hood of the new Volt, there's a slightly larger 1.5-litre four-cylinder engine, putting to rest rumours that the second-generation Volt would have a three-banger as a range extender, more efficient than the current 1.4-litre engine in the 2015 Volt. This engine has been especially adapted for lower emissions and ultra-lean fuel burn, so expect a range extended mode to yield a far better gas mileage than current cars. There's also a completely rebuilt drivetrain, US-made, including two new electric motors that GM says are more efficient and use far less rare earth metals than their predecessors. Combine this with a more energy dense, lighter battery pack and we think an all electric range of at least 60 miles per charge should be possible. Watch this space for more news as we have it. 
3D printing's great, isn't it? As well as allowing you to create any number of cool trinkets and doodads, and yes, even print food, it turns out 3D printing may soon one day be able to print super energy dense lithium ion battery packs for your car. Enter Graphene 3D Labs Inc, a company which has just applied for a series of patents pertaining to 3D printed lithium ion batteries. Using graphene as an electrode, the company says its printed 3D batteries are incredibly energy dense and simple to make. And because they're printed, they can be built in pretty much any shape conceivable. At the moment, the company has managed to produce a battery the same size and energy capabilities as a AA battery, but it's hoped that they will, with the right help, be able to produce printed battery packs that could even form the structural element of an electric car in the future. Now that's neat. Just like those arguments about how clean the energy really is that powers electric cars, hydrogen fuel cell cars often come under criticism because of the way in which the hydrogen fuel they use is generated in the first place. Like electric cars then, hydrogen fuel cell cars are only as clean as the energy used to power them, so it's no wonder that Japanese automaker Honda, one of the world's biggest supporters of hydrogen fuel cell technology, is keen to highlight green ways of generating hydrogen for use in its upcoming fuel cell vehicles. And that's why Honda switched on an all new hydrogen generation plant this week at its UK manufacturing base near Swindon, which is powered slowly by photovoltaic solar panels. Sadly, I don't have the technical info yet, but the multi-megawatt solar array is used to electrolyze water, releasing oxygen into the atmosphere and capturing the hydrogen in the process. Now from where I'm standing, the whole thing is still pretty energy intensive, but expect a tech primer on the whole solar powered hydrogen next week on Transport Evolved. And if you haven't seen it already, check out my thoughts on driving a hydrogen fuel cell car for the first time in a very long while over on our YouTube channel. It's super sexy, sleek and the highest performing electric car money can buy, but also the Tesla Model S happens to be super expensive to buy, wherever in the world you happen to be. And in the UK and US, general local and national incentive programs can help bring the cost of a Tesla Model S down by a few thousand. But over in Shanghai, China, a new incentive program from the city's municipal government means that those who can afford to buy a Tesla Model S won't have to fork out the usual $12,000 registration fee that the city's residents normally have to fork out to obtain license plates for their car. That registration fee, intentionally large to try and dissuade Chinese citizens from compounding the nation's chronic air pollution problems by buying a new car, operates alongside a strict limit to the number of new car registrations a city can process each month. But with the Tesla Model S zero emissions, more Chinese cities than ever before are bending the rules for the luxury plug-in, meaning buyers not only get a chance to own a car, but also don't have to pay through the nose to do so. Lucky them. It's official. After continued month-on-month -month sales records, the Nissan Leaf passed its US sales record for 2013 sometime during September, more than three months before the end of 2014. The 36% sales increase year-on-year -year means that the 2014 will be the Leaf's highest selling year since it went on sale back in 2010, and demonstrates that plug-in cars are finally starting to get the attention and consideration of mainstream car buyers. Among the reasons for increased sales, Nissan says, is the so-called cul-de-sac effect, where one person buys a Nissan Leaf, then evangelizes about it to friends, family and colleagues, who then go out and buy a plug-in car of their own. Generous incentives and higher public charging provision is also sure to have helped. But we're curious to know if you've purchased a Nissan Leaf this year, and if doing so was prompted by someone else who you knew already owned one. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. They've built incredible Rube Goldberg machines, worked with highly trained canines, and even turned a Chevrolet Sonic into a musical instrument. But for their latest music video madness, music group OK Go turned to Japanese electric vehicles for help. Enter Honda's Beta Unicub, a tiny Segway-like self-balancing bar stool that is steered by shifting your weight while seated atop its tiny frame. Powered by a tiny lithium-ion battery, these little EVs are used for a variety of neat choreographed stunts in the official video for I Won't Let You Down. As well as providing the band members transport throughout the double speed video, a whole fleet of unicubs, and I do mean a fleet, are used for Japanese umbrella brandishing schoolgirls, who provide some pretty unique and fun visual effects as the camera pulls away way out at the end of the song atop a drone. It's kind of hard to explain, but you should totally, totally watch it. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. And in the meantime, visit www.transportevolved.com for all the evolved transport news that's fit to print. Subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube. And 
don't forget to join us live on Sunday at the 6pm GMT slot for the Transport Evolve panel talk show, where we'll be discussing these stories and more. You can watch live on our website at www.transportevolve.com or you can join us via our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Transport Evolved. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a great weekend and until next time, stay juiced up. <laughs>